all this common lines stuff. <coughs> so So initial talk was designed to talk about the Amazon CLI and uh, Terraform. At some point in time, I realized how, how complicated it is to talk only about Amazon CLI. It will take another few presentations. So I said, okay, let's stop with CLI and next time we'll speak about the Terraform. So it will be mostly a car crash course. It will be uh, what I encounter, how I learn. It's, it's basically the progression. So about quickly about me, I'm working in Standard Chartered uh, CDO DevOps lead, economist by training, AWS certified. So disclaimer, just in case. So all these source, so sources for the course and everything will be later on on the GitHub, you can find it. So you moving, so what is Amazon CLI? So, so basically Amazon CLI, it's, it's allow you to control Amazon API. You can co control instances, you can control almost all the environment. As also Julian show as can be done in container services. So it's a low level, more, it's written in Python. It allows you to control all AWS, most of the AWS services, automate them through scripting as well. Uh, manage AWS resources in programmatic way. So we'll show how it is done. Uh, it's very easy to install, control the US resources through Amazon API. Only one dependency you have, it's only Python. Basically, if you have a Python, you can run it. So no complicated setup, basically pretty straightforward. If you have Amazon account, you probably have AWS access key and this secret key. So probably you will need to make sure you have rights for your account, but if you're running as a root, probably it should work. So. As a platform, it's run everywhere. So it's run on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Unix. Uh, dependency only on the Python, run on the both on Python 2 and Python 3. So actually, Amazon CLI is more or less, they consider two components. One is Amazon CLI and another Amazon Shell. Amazon CLI, probably you, most, you can use programmatically. Amazon Shell is mostly for the GUI, where it's a very nice interface with all these fancy things, colors and all the stuff which is coming in, so we'll show. Later on. So, very quickly, maybe most of you are already familiar. You need to have a Python. Check with the Python version is compatible. Check on the pip version as well because we use the pip for installation. Uh, again, um, after installation, we can check on AWS versioning. So, pretty straightforward. Just to show you how. So this will be, for example, if I want to check my version. I'm writing on 1.1161, basically the latest version of Python 3.6. So this is usually how do you use installation, pipe, install, upgrade. Advisable to use user, so not to mix with all the Python stuff. So this will be on advisor and Mac OS. You, you can use the view. Windows, you can install 32 or 64 bit version as well. It's already packaged. A uh, nice feature that uh, if you use a shell, it's nice to use a completion. Everybody who's using Bash, completion nice tool. People who are familiar with the Z shell, even more so. So this can be done, just add this, I mean, find out where is your AWS completer and add it to the .bashrc file or .zrc uh, file as well. The completer comes with the install? Or yes, the completer comes with the installation, uh, yes. Oh, Once you install it, it's, it's part of it, yeah. So, I mean, in this case, if you see it, it's completer, actually it was installed without a user. Yeah, if it is installed with a user, you'll find it in the home.local bin, probably, will be there. Uh, I mean, don't try to use this key, it doesn't work, so it's for demo, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, this is how you configure, basically, so the common AWS configure, you need to have your access key and secret key, you need to specify I mean, this is the most important part. It's a uh, access key, secret key, and nice to specify also the region, because always we'll ask you after that. So by default, it's a JSON if you don't specify it, but you can specify table or text as well. So, so this is quick installation. So once, one of the example, we can use it. For example, let's describe our regions. Every time output is in format, let's make it nice is in the JSON format. 
So this is how you usually will see it. A uh, nice tool to have with uh, CLI is the JQ. It's basically a seed for JSON if you want really to play with it. So it's really recommended. Okay. So uh, what what is the syntax? Basically everything what you try to start is start with AWS command. After that, depending on you, if you want to run on the networking part or the EC2, you start AWS EC2. If you want to start... Uh, I don't know, RDS, you start AWS RDS. So sh next we will show. So most of the common ones, we have a debug output, depending on the type of output you want, JSON text table. Query, you can do additional filtering from our output. You can specify as well the region, if you can add additional few profiles. So you can, once you can configure, you can additional profiles, you can specify per profiles. For example, you have a multiple user using the same machine, in different times of the day, they can use their own profile. So again, it's possible. So let's do a few quick examples. Uh, let's see. So basically for S3, if I want to see my S3 buckets, how many buckets I have, I just list them here. So basically this is a buckets available there. I think this is, it's, I'll go without t box. So let's, let's see for example, how does it look in case if I want to output the table. Right, so this will be a table output. Very nice, if I wanted the clear text, I will do text, will give us the text. By default, if I don't do anything, we'll go the JSON format. So most useful for, for programmatical way will be the JSON still, yeah. If you want to just to see it, it will be the table. So debug, it will give additional information, a lot of additional information if you want. So again, filtering is very useful. Let's take the same comment very quickly. And we want to see only for Asia Pacific. In this case, we have all the regions. We have only for Asia Pacific, it will filter us, for example. That's where the filtering is used. So filtering is used, what it means actually is take the name from the JSON and the value, everything which is started is AP, which is Asia Pacific side. Uh, query even more nicer, it can be combined Let's see output of the query side. Ooh. Okay, so this is how it show us basically it's, it's a filter based on the region, it's give us only the region name. Uh, you can combine them and output in the text, this is more complete one. So from the presentation, everything what is running in presentation, you can should be able to run as well. Okay. This is, that's what happened during presentations. <laughs> okay, moving forward. So if we want to create the first VPC, so what I did in my EW, uh, AWS and my region, I don't have any VPC, I even deleted the default one. Now I have a default which was created. So this is for Singapore. So let's delete it. Meantime, what we'll do, we'll create a new VPC. So very simple things. The command is AWS to create VPC. You just need to specify CIDR blocks for your network sp space. So basically this is the output what we have. So we created a new VPC. If we compare with a 557 with a VPC number, we can quickly see in the VPC layer, just refresh it, and we see this number here. So to speed up, uh, we can describe VPC. Again, this is one comment for description of VPC. We can do it again from the shell. We can see the same data. So again, we can add additional attributes. So I will not add it in this situation because we are limited with the time and we have one more speaker. So we'll go a little bit faster. Again, we can describe VPC. We can, uh, one difficulty if you try to use every time the command line purely, you, every time you need to remember, for example, to add this additional information that you may not have or may need to query separately. Basically, copy-paste is very inconvenient sometimes, and if you want to try to automate, it's not very ideal. So you need to keep some information as a variable, sometimes export it, so 
again not advisable so let's let's say the copy paste is not an option let's try a programmatic way so very nice option the CLI it's show you it's give you a generate skeleton output so let's see what it does in this case so in this case it doesn't it's uh, it's basically some kind of dry run but it give you output what you would expect based on this uh, generate skeleton on the output side you can now decide what variables do you want to use during the generation and input them as a shell variable and just let's take one example so we can output directly the variable so in this case we are interested in the vpc id right because we can pass it directly to the next so if we take this example we need only vpc id oh. So basically what we get here this volume now we base we can create we can do the same in the uh, jq which is actually it's much more nicer i like jq more than in build okay so let's i'll just give an example with the output it's more colorful which is <laughs> if i do that it will give us the same UPC idea. So I would prefer JQ because it's less typing. If you compare the previous one, you need to, to type more. So I don't like typing. So looking forward, how do we can export as a variable? So let's take example here. So we create a shell variables, which will contain this data. So let's quickly try to run it and see what has happened. Okay, now if I do an echo for this variable, I should see my VPC ID, which is basically just what's created. If I'm going to back, I should have two VPCs. One I created previously, now I created now. Right, now that I have a VPC, I can move forward and create additional. Now I'm passing every time, I'm just passing the variables without knowing. So I can put basically a simple shell script and start passing all over. So to speed up, again, so in this demo, what we do, we create few subnets to for attach them for different availability zone. Uh, you can consult a little bit later in the GitHub. I'll show you the address where you can see more complicated ones. So again, routing table for subnet association we can do uh, internet gateway again to attach and create the route for internet gateway so we'll not run it now this is uh, i did some creativity so some security groups i created security groups with the different names cicd rds redis ape so i try to separate for each elb elastic search to be as, as secure as possible now the when I try to attach to the security group, for example, if I try to open additional ports, for example, I need port 22 and port 80, right? So I need to run multiple commands for each port, but you have a option in one single command, but you run as a JSON and I'll explain. So this is our more complicated command. You will see how it looks. It's not very user friendly. We parse it in the JSON parser. And basically what I'm doing, I'm just running a JSON passing to the comment. Can I move white low JSON data clear? Ooh, format. Okay. So this is a simple JSON. What I'm doing here, opening port 22 for in for this IP range, 8080 if I want to run the J Jenkins or anything. Again, I can pass as a parameter another security group. Okay, so ports for RDS. So again, this is example how to open the ports for RDS. For example, I'm opening only port 336 only for one group. For CICD, another one will be application group. This is just examples. Uh, tagging, again, is very straightforward. Once you create everything, you create the tags. So we can check environment variables. So I create a, sh a sh short script we can take a look it's so 
So we have currently only VPC environment variables. So in this script that basically query all environment variables that we have. Actually, it's too big. Okay, so this is just a query, basically. What I'm doing, I'm, every time I query something, I put in the, as environment variables inside the memory. This is in the case if I'm running copy-pasting, right? If you like to copy-paste and you like to see on your monitor things, so this is like, very useful. So basically, we try to describe everything what is here. So just to, to load the environment variables, so basically I'm loading this from this way, so they will load in, into the memory. Uh, so I did create a small shell script. We'll run for it now. I think depending on the speed of the network, sometimes it take time, sometimes it take so yeah, basically it's querying some environment variables that doesn't exist, but this is known, it's not an error. So this is output. So let's try to delete our VPCs and we create a new VPC altogether. Okay, so what we'll do now, I created a script, basically we'll try, it's just copy paste from the command line without much logic inside, which will try to create entire environment, we'll create uh, uh, VPCs, subnets, uh, routing tables, RDS, Redis, and some EC2 instances, plus all permissions. Just as for your idea to see how we uh, let me see where is it first. So it's AWS create environment. We take a quick glance. Okay. So, so what did you see here? Basically, if you take these commands and manually paste it in the shell, it will work. So what we'll do, we'll just run this command. AWS. So. And we'll see as well the output. So it will run a few minutes. I will not stop here, but ideally by the end of the day, we should see complete environment. Uh, we can go by including, uh, we can, I included as well the Redis load balancer as well. Some instances with uh, user data, with complete updates and everything. So basically everything in one script. Uh, I'm not a big fan actually on the CLI. I think it's some better tools around. So like Terraform with the Packer, they can do a better job, much more easier. Uh, CLI is still has its use cases. I think I, if you know the CLI to learn the Terraform, it's much more easier. Uh, so I mean, the screen is doing its works. I hope it works. I didn't test it today. So if the script is very simple, it's absolutely plain text, copy paste from the command line. I have a question about experimentation. So is Terraform then the only way to try to run these scripts without kind of creating cost or like it's, it's, No, no, this is still ISO. What what is interesting if you I'm exiting my shell shell, I'm going back basically all information gone. So I need to run another script which is go and describe every single instance is passed it to them. And if I have multiple, it still will be difficult. I don't know which is the first one, it show the second one. So that's why consistency is, consistency is a difficult. It's a tool which is very useful in this case would be to run the cloud formation, that you run as a template. So then it really makes sense. Terraform is give you additional flexibility to structure your code because cloud formation, you dump everything in a single file. So this is very difficult to read if you want to modify something. It's not it's more difficult to make it consistent. In Terraform, you have you can structure your code in multiple files. And uh, if you need any update, so again, it will work. So if you can see just latest update I have here, I already, I already have all my environment up and running. And let's see my VPCs, subnets, internet routing. I quickly check my RDS. 
as well. An elastic cache just to make sure it's up and running. Yeah, I have one instance. Amazing is still creating. And uh, elastic cache. Let me see what is there. Mem cache I should have. No, I don't. Ah, Redis, yes, correct. Yeah, it's still there. Awesome. Now I, I have a chance to feel proud of myself. So <laughs> on EC2, we should see security groups. Yeah, uh, there. This we are just created. Load balancer, I hope is there. Yes, is there. So even with the S3 for logs, as well, we have a target groups and I use um, load balancer version two. In this case, so I think we still don't have instances. Yeah. Okay, not everything is perfect, so. Uh, again, if I want to delete it, because I already have them in environment variables, I can delete it straightforward. So I just need to invoke uh, AWS Dell environment. It will take another 10 minutes. Uh, so presentation, basically this is a web-based presentation, if you can see URL, so you can find will will be, be there. Uh, the source, again, so we have some more information on more official PDF, so if you go to GitHub, you can file all the scripts, <coughs> which is some of them, as a reference, it could be useful. So, any questions? Quick ones? I think we have. Yeah. How is this different from cloud formation? Uh, cloud formation is a template. Yeah. You, from the beginning, you need to set up every single part in the template. You run it completely. It will dump into the. Basically, it's a, mostly the same. You can do it, but here you have a more granular control. And uh, it's not. You can use basically the bolt. So I don't see that much difference depending on how you li like it, if you like shell scripts. But the c consistency will be much more better in the, to, in the template to, to run I think the, 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 great, the big difference is that with cloud formation, you just describe the stuff in your launch it. Yeah. And then with, with the CLI, you're able actually to monitor and control it. Uh, basically, what, what we are using it for is just that when you have uh, a waterfall between ELBs, API gateways, EC2 instances, and and, 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 and Route 53 zones. At one point, you say, someone of you guys in the company says, oh, this subdomain is not working. We're like, oh, fuck, who, who's involved with that? So you, you run your, your set of uh, CLI tools to just say, okay, this domain name points to this load balancer that points to this uh, auto-scaling group that contains these five instances. So it gives you like, the picture back actually, <coughs> not. Yeah, basically, so I've, I didn't invest much time in the cloud formation, so I still like more Terraform. So it's my preference. So, but it's, again, if you want to learn the Terraform properly or anything, even cloud formation, it would be a good start to go start with the CLI because you go deep enough to understand how the cloud formation works. So, okay. I think most of the you manage development is when the things get complex, like uh, creating a big system, a uh, shared resources, you can manage to create all your dependencies on your own in the CLI. But the cloud form is available, it helps you with that, so you can uh, manage those dependencies. Okay. So, so you can have your own set of APIs and your own. All those are actually clearly uh, defined, and you don't need to worry about all those jobs. What you need to define is manually in CLI. Yeah, it's more work with CLI, absolutely. So. Okay, thank you. Yes.